before we get to today's episode, don't forget to sign up to the book at theisthebestuse.com. That's where you'll find all of the links on where you can buy it, Amazon Chapters, Barnes & Noble, all these places. You can get it there in ebook, paperback, and hardcover. So however you like to consume content, it is there for you. Now, on to today's episode. Hi, my name is Gary Hibbert, and the highest and best use for my business is my podcast, my private investing, and my brokerage. Thanks for tuning into the highest and best use real estate podcast, where we talk techniques to optimize your land, structure, skill sets, and time, as well as the highest and best use principles to make your business more profitable, productive, and efficient. I'm your host, Ryan Carr, reminding you that good deals are found, great deals are created. Oh my goodness. My guest today, Gary Hibbert. Uh, Gary is a podcast host himself. Real talk with Gary Hibbert. So check that out after you listen to mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Deep Pockets. He has a private lending company called Deep Pockets. And he's also a co-owner of Our Neighborhood Realty. So my man. Ryan. Thank I, you for being here. Thank you for uh, for having me here. I'm excited to do this with you. Yeah. I'm excited for your show. Yeah. Uh, and and I, again, like you know, I've, I've seen your progress and what you've done over the years, and so it's cool. I, I like this, and uh, I'm excited to do this with you. Cool. I'm on the other side of the table. I this know. Time. I know. Doesn't so. it feel, does it feel funny? A little. It feels funny for me to interview you because yeah. like I've been on your show like what three times or something. Yeah, about now, three times. Now. And I actually looked it up on YouTube today. Yeah. And I was like, when did we do this? 2017. Yeah. was the first one yeah yeah so three times you've come out you've you've spoken to our uh, our investors several times as That's well true. too At the group yeah 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 so you've been a part of uh, a part <laughs> of my, uh, my 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 growth our organization uh-huh, uh-huh. and uh, and and we've become great friends over the we years have. so have. it's been good so for today uh, three key points of the show how's this going to run down so yep. highest and best use of time I'm really interested in highest and best use of time being so busy and so active in many facets I would yep. love to know how you spend your time and how you cut that up so yeah uh, time and money really podcast number one lending number two and real estate brokerage number three okay that's where we're taking the show so uh, kick, it. kick it off and tell the folks who you are yeah so my name is Gary Hibbert I am a real estate agent I'm a real estate investor I'm a podcast host I do private lending I'm owner of a brokerage and you know what you know when I say that sometimes I, I, I get taken back because there was a time in my life when there's no way I could have ever thought this was possible you know, um, I remember uh, uh, my son when he was around. Uh, it was a couple of years old. I picked him up from from the daycare. Yeah, and we get home. He's in this dirty diaper. I go to the fridge. There's no food in there. And I go <laughs> and I go to the mailbox with them. And there's this GST check in there for like seventy four dollars. I'm like, awesome! Like I needed refund? that money. The refund. The refund. refund. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I needed it. I needed that refund. And I was like, there's something fundamentally wrong in my life. Like, right. what am I doing wrong? If you're waiting I've got for this, the 74 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Like, I've, I've got this good job. My wife, I'm working at TD Bank. My wife was working at Bank of Montreal. What, what, like, what, what, what went wrong? And I had to really sit down and kind of figure it out and stop blaming maybe other people in my life. Take a look at what was causing me to have less money, but more month. Mm. And... And really take accountability for where I was going in my life. And that, it, it, now, and so so when I go back to the intro, I'm like, I can't believe that I've, I've created and built what I've built. But also to say that anything is possible. Because I'm no different. I'm not special. I'm just a person who said, I'm changing my direction. Yeah. I want to go this way now. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're, we're not like animals. We don't just are driven by instinct we can actually change our lives if we decide to. You're a big believer in Jim Rohn. Oh, I love Jim Rohn. How has Jim Rohn crafted your days? The way that he crafted my days in the beginning was going to work instead of listening to music. Mm-hmm. Instead of listening to the radio, I started actually feeding my mind. <laughs> yeah. Feeding my mind and listening to words. And it's incredible how powerful words can be mm-hmm. to change your ideology your philosophy and belief in yourself totally and uh and, and here's another other interesting thing as well too in the beginning is that i remember when we would go for lunch and i'd have jim Rohn, <laughs> you know in the tape deck yeah, in yeah. fact in, in, the the CD, tape, yeah. in the tape deck <laughs> and, and 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 so we'd get in the car and i would turn it on and jim Rohn would start talking yeah and and my friends are like you listen to this stuff Dude, what is, yeah and i'm like no 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 that's my wife's it's not mine <laughs> 
but it, it was Darlene, because if you're of, listening, we're sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, it was, but it was because my mind hadn't shifted yet. Hmm. Like I didn't have the belief that this was actually going to change my life, but it felt like it could. So were you almost embarrassed there. of it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was embarrassed of it. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, you're going back to like 2009, 2010, yeah. around that time frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that wasn't really a big thing back then. Maybe it was, but not around, not in the circle that I was in. Not in your sphere. Isn't that yeah. interesting how things evolve? Mm-hmm. Like that could have been the biggest thing in California, which yeah. is where Jim Rohn is from. Right. right. But maybe here in Ontario, not so much. And right. then all of a sudden, you know, bang, it changed your world. And then you drip on other people and change theirs. Right. What's your favorite Jim Rohn quote? Mm. There's so many. There are so the many. The guy's just a legend. Yeah. You know, this is my favorite one. Um, make the goal to become a millionaire. Mm. Not for the money, but for the person you'll become to achieve it. And the reason why that's so powerful is because you realize that it's not about the money. It's the person that you that you transform into. Mm-hmm. Because the person that I am today and the person that I was before, they're completely different people. And so now where I am, the belief is like so much stronger now. Like I'm not, the focus isn't just money. It's about lifestyle. Mm. It's about helping other people. It's about um, what what can I actually do in this life? Yeah. What can I leave behind? Whether it be a legacy, um, sharing what I've learned. Because the more that I, that I give, and again, you know, we can go into biblical terms here, the more that you receive. You know, but when you don't have, it feels like you should receive first and then give. Isn't that a perspective shift? It oh is. Oh my gosh. It is. It's such a huge perspective shift. Hmm. Put the customer first, as they say, yeah. in retail or anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I always wondered that about Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons always, like they would grow the menu and grow the menu and grow the menu. And eventually, from what I understand, they diluted their menu so much mm-hmm. that they didn't do anything well. So they paired the menu back and then they started doing things well again, which put the customer first, which brought the sales back. It's the same mentality that you're saying. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, and sometimes you got to take that step back. And uh, and I've talked about this before too. Like you know, like with me, and I love taking uh, the mini retirements. Yeah. And those mini retirements are so important to me because it allows me to take a step back. And I think in any business um, or anything that you do, you always need quiet time. Hmm. You always need that time to say, "Am I going in the right direction? W- what I'm doing is it the right thing? And is it?" allow me to grow in the right direction you know and that step back is important and that's why i love the mini retirements is that the hardest thing for you to do like you can build businesses and lend money and like do podcasts and do all these crazy things Mm -hmm. is that one of the hardest things for you to do is take a step back and reflect it it is it 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 is and it isn't okay and so what i mean the reason i ask it's the hardest thing for me to do Mm -hmm. because i'm such a doer and sometimes when i see other people that are doers they experience that same challenge so i'm wondering if that's if that's you or are you like, no, I got to figure it out. Yeah. Here's why I think maybe I was able to figure it out mm-hmm. and, and, and why it's so important that I take that break. Dri- drip on me. Yes, on I, will. I will. <laughs> Thank I will. You. So in my early thirties, um, you know, when me and my wife were together, we had two young kids and our mothers were such an important part of our lives. Mm-hmm. And at the age of 56, my mom well, prior to that, got cancer and she passed away at 56. Mm-hmm. Three months later, my mother-in-law passed away from the same cancer. So imagine losing two powerful figures in your life. Like, wow. you know what a mother is like. Yeah. And so we lost them. And then we were lost for a couple of years where we actually disconnected because we had spent two, three years looking after our moms and taking right. them to treatments and, and to the hospital. And then they're gone, like this void. Like you have this massive void. Yeah. And then you realize that this is not forever. Hmm. And then when you realize this is not forever, then you're like, well, then how do I how do I live life to not only just the fullest, but also to enjoy it as well, too, to stop and smell the roses and and realize that yes, I'm building this business and 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 I'm trying to make money and return on investment, but return on time. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people forget and miss that piece of how important that is, yeah. you know? And, and, and so for me, that's important. And you, because of those, those two huge losses, and also too, a couple of years ago, I lost my sister, my younger sister. Yeah. And so that was another powerful um, or detrimental loss in, in our lives as well. So mm-hmm. you realize that you do have to have balance and it's difficult to have that work-life balance. Mm-hmm. And so the best way I figured out how to do it was to, to actually stop. 
just to stop and then reflect. And it, my team, the, the events, everything that we do just stops. Now, there's a few things that are obviously still going on, but it's more of a four-hour work week. That's the only way I figured out how to do the four-hour work week <laughs> is to just, just stop everything else and then now I have the four-hour work week. Because other, other than that, to do a four-hour work week, I don't see how that's possible when, when, when you have as many businesses. I mean, you know what you were doing as well, too. I don't know if you could have done the four-hour work week. I couldn't. No. You know? Mm -hmm. so, but this is the way that I figured out how to do it. Interesting. How do you quantify return on time? Is it life? Is it hours work versus time or money made? Like, how do you, how do you quantify that? I quantify that by spending it with friends and family and the people that I enjoy spending time with. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you're busy working, you don't get the time to be able to do that because they're not maybe always part of your business. Um, and so that's how I quanti quantitate it. Hmm. Yeah. With the, with spending it with the people that I enjoy. Um, enjoying doing things that I want to do. And how do you figure that out? Mm -hmm. You got to have a whiteboard. I think the whiteboard is <laughs> so important because I'd like to write down what I want. It's kind of like this. Here's a, here's a way that I like to explain it to people. It's like, it's like jumping in a boat and then sailing to England without a map. Hmm. Well, you're not going to be able to figure it out. Maybe by luck or by chance. We're going to head northeast. Right. It'll, it'll just but, but if you're yeah. able to then actually write it out. And so this is one of the things that my wife and I do every January is we write down what we want to accomplish this year. Mm -hmm. And it's more of figuring out like, okay, you want to do this. I want to do this. How do we, how do we come to an agreement? How do we, how do we come to either compromise and then say, okay, let's make the commitment to actually say or do what we say that we're, that yeah. we plan on doing. Do you do them together or do them or separate? together? No, together. Okay. And we argue. No. <laughs> <laughs> we argue about it. You argue about what we're what we're trying to accomplish and mm -hmm. this is where we will want to go. But it's important to do that because then you, you don't want to be in the same households but going in different directions. Right. Right. So not only is business important, but also the relationship and, and, and making sure that you're on the same same path and same mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. Let's transition into your podcast. Mm. You started your podcast in what year? I think I started that back in 2016. I was starting to kind of play around with it. Mm -hmm. 2016 is when I started doing it, but I was only doing them once a month. And once a month? Once a month. Really? Because I had so many other things going on. Sure. Right? So I didn't want to overwhelm myself mm -hmm. because a lot of times people fail is when they're like, okay, this is what I want to do it, and they take <laughs> on too much. Yeah. So I was like, let me just try this out first. Let me see if I even like doing this podcast. Um, and then doing it once a month, but that I only did eight a year because don't forget, I still have my mini retirement. So I didn't do anything in the summer. Like I literally didn't do anything in the summer yeah. and I shut it down again in the winter. Uh, and I don't think it was until around 20, I want to say 2019 is I think when I really kind of picked it up I said, okay, I like this. I was able to then shift some of my workload off of my plate um, that allowed me to now focus more on my podcasts. Gotcha. Um, and, uh, and, and I love it. I still get it was one a month. So like if I was on your show in 2017, yeah. I was your, I was like your one guy for yeah. like the whole the month whole of month. June yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Ryan Carr is yeah, for the month of this June. Is it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. What, what was your, what was your main goal when you started the podcast? Like, was it money? Was it networking? What, what, yeah. what drove you to do that? The main goal at the time was it's always funny when you look back on, on your life, right? Is I thought that I knew enough to start teaching people. Hmm. And what I've realized now is that the podcast has taught me way more than I've taught people. And so it's allowed me to also refocus on what's important. Mm -hmm. And when you interview people who are incredibly successful and have built incredible businesses, <laughs> and you ask them fundamental questions, and even personal questions, like what what was one of your darkest days in your life, or have you ever gone through depression? Mm -hmm. And then when they tell you that some of it is related to the businesses that they built, well, you have to then really pay attention to that, and then dig a little deeper and find out, well, hold on a second, what is the purpose of life? Why are we doing what we're doing? And, and you can get so wrapped up in, in the accolades 
And and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with building business. Obviously, build it. You know, it's, yeah. it's good to do that. But you also have to take a step back and say, am I moving in the right direction? Mm-hmm. Does does what I'm doing make sense? And and am I digging myself into uh, a hole? Because sometimes you got to be careful what you wish for. Sure. You know, because yeah. all of a sudden now you're you just bare, you you know like for me when I when I left TD Bank and I'm like okay I want financial freedom and I was getting towards it and I'm doing it. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my God, I'm working 24 hours a day. Yeah. Like you you got to be careful what you build. It's and funny because people go, oh, for. you're self-employed. Like, yeah, you're self-employed. You get, you get to make your own hours, right? It's like, yeah, I get to work all of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not always as rosy as everybody paints this yeah. picture. No, it isn't. And so, yeah, but I, but I mean, I've gotten to the point now where I do enjoy, like I really enjoy what I'm doing, but I'm always trying to figure out how do I outsource certain things that I'm doing that, uh, that I don't enjoy. Um, that's, I think that's um, a difficult part in building a business because mm-hmm. in the beginning, as you know, you get to wear m- multiple hats. You do. And, uh, and I, man, I was like the tech guy. I was a <laughs> blogger. I was a social media guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the, uh, I was everything. And then eventually you have to start to outsource that. And that's, that's, that's hard because you, you never have enough money in the beginning hmm. to hire staff or hire admin. At least you don't believe so. Mm-hmm. And then you realize that it allows you to open up more time so that you can now focus on your strengths right. and what you're good at. Um, because all that other stuff is, you know, it's, you're, if you're not good at it, you shouldn't do it. Right. Unless there's certain things in your business that you really enjoy doing. Like there's certain things that I still enjoy doing mm-hmm. and I probably shouldn't do it, but I like it. Like what? <laughs> Give me one. Anything related to the podcast. You're like, you know what? I really shouldn't do this, but ah, I just, I just love it. Yeah. Um, I like doing my stories on social. I have yeah. fun with it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? Like just kind of putting it together. <laughs> I do have a social media manager that manages the main feed and uh, and kind of puts everything together and, and writes everything up for me. But uh, th- that's one. Um, what else do I really enjoy doing? I think that's maybe one of the things. Yeah, that's yeah. A, like I probably shouldn't ticket. do it, but I enjoy it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know I what? mean, there, there are other things as well. But. Keeps you in the flow too. Keeps you current, keeps yep. you top of mind, right? Yep. And if you love doing it, like when you're on there, you're going to see other people's stories. They're going to influence you as mm-hmm. to how you produce yours. And like, if you can make great content, people follow your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Return on time for the podcast. Um, have you subbed anything out now, you know, years later versus what you maybe weren't or were doing in the beginning? In the beginning, I was doing everything. Yeah. So in the beginning, I, you're was, the, you're the finding, guy. I was finding the <laughs> guests, which I still do. Yep. I still enjoy finding the guests. Um, there's a social aspect to that. That's kind of fun. Yeah. So I do, I do enjoy that. Um, also I enjoy, um, just getting everything set up like the mics. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoy, I enjoy, I think almost, so what I've outsourced is a question. So I've outsourced now the editing piece of it Mm. because that took a long time. And also in the beginning, I was cutting out all the ums yep. and the ahs. And like, because I wanted it to be perfect. Just seamless. Yeah, I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted the sound to be good. I was always playing with this and that. And then I realized like, I'm not an audio technician guy. That's right. not who I am. Right. So stop messing around with it. <laughs> you changed the name of your show, Perfect Pitch with yeah, Gary yeah. Hebert, right? <laughs> right. And, and, so, and so that part of, of the podcast, I actually outsourced it. And I think that's uh, it's important to, to do that because if you're not good at it, then just get rid of it. Yeah. Um, and again, when I did it, it was like, it was a lot. It was a lot. It felt like it was a lot of money. But sure. now I look back at it, I'm like, okay, it's not. That was a this smart is, thing it to was do. such a smart thing to do mm-hmm. because there's somebody that can do it way faster than I can. Yeah. They can do a way better job. And let the professionals just do what they're good at. And Isn't that interesting? Efficiency is so key. Yeah. Like you could do it. Right. But like if it takes you however long to do and somebody can do it in half the time and that frees you up to go and do something else, lending money, starting a real estate brokerage, like doing all of those things. Mm-hmm. Is that a higher and better use of your time? Probably. Yeah, absolutely. It Pro- is. Like being the business owner. Yeah. Right. In this sure. situation, probably. Yeah. And then, you know, I've got somebody that does creates a cover and. Yeah. Um, comes up with uh, even like some of the things that I sh- like some of the questions and um, but I'll tell you the truth though 
even with the questions, even though, uh, like, I'll ask the guests, you know, send over some questions for me. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll ask those questions, but a lot of times I'm also just sitting down and enjoying the conversation and right. seeing where it's going from. That was always difficult in the beginning yeah. because you feel like you got to keep hammering them. Yeah, like questions. loading up on the next thing, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but I've gotten now more comfortable with actually just sitting back, allowing the conversation to unfold yeah. however it's going to unfold. And then mm -hmm. sometimes at the end of it, We'll take the headphones off and we look at each other. I'm like, I didn't even know we were going to go in this yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What an enjoyable conversation that was. <laughs> and that is fun because the people that are your, your audience that's listening to your show, they know if it's authentic or not. They can tell if yeah. there's a, a true um, connection, engagement with the guests <laughs> and the host. That's true. Do right. we have that connection? Do we, do I we share I believe it? we do. I believe we do. And and that's one of the things, too. Like, I didn't send you any questions today. I know. I know you didn't. I was reading your, your bio today, and I was like, Gary, what a great guy. Yeah. This guy's the best. But you know what it does, though, too, is it allows me to, it puts me in more uncomfortable situations. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I've grown. I remember I shared this with um, uh, Sandy and mm. uh, and Rob. Yeah. And we were talking about the first podcast. I was one of the uh, first guests that they had on their show, mm -hmm. maybe like episode five yeah. or six. It was pretty early on. It's the, uh, for anybody listening, it's the Breakthrough Real Estate Podcast. Uh, Correct. Yeah, Sandy yeah, Rob. Really, really good mm -hmm. show. They've done, in, they've done incredibly well with that show. And um, they were one of the first Canadian podcasts that really blew up in the real estate they space. They were. Yeah. yeah, they were. And um, and I remember we had a list of questions. I don't remember if I gave it to them or if they gave it to me. But whatever it was, I wrote out every single answer in paragraph form. Okay? I'm not lying. In paragraph form. And so when we were going through the podcast, thank God it wasn't live. <laughs> you know, it was just it was like over the phone or something. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I was reading my answers word for word. Really? That is how nervous I was. You're such a good speaker, though. Like, you're, yeah. so, you're so smooth. Like, I, I would never have taken that. I would have never thought that you would be that type. Yeah. But I guess maybe that's evolved over time. Yes, it has. Mm. And it continues to, uh, it continues to evolve. Yeah. You know? But yeah, I, that is how nervous I was. No and they had asked, I think, a question or two questions out of order. And it just, it, it, it got kind of messed me, up. It, yeah, it got me messed up. I, yeah. I lost my footing a bit. That is how, and, and, and so I say th that because I want people that are listening to this to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And if they can, if you can do that more in your life, you'll find what ends up happening is you, you push yourself outside of that, um, your, your circle of comfort, but then you can always come back in again. Mm -hmm. And now that circle is a little bigger that you can then push a little bit more. And the more that you do that, the more life experience you get, the more things that you didn't realize that you were capable of, and 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 the more enjoyment I, I believe that you get out of life. Right. Right. Um, listen, anytime anybody asks me to do a podcast or if they ask me to come out and do a talk, my first response in my head mm -hmm. is, I don't want to do this. Ah. And then I That's stop. That's like your protective self. It is. Yeah. It is. That's the first thing. And then I go back into, okay, you've done this before. Then it goes to, yeah, but you remember you messed up one time at this event? So, and that's your, that's your, your, that self talk. It's almost like the, the angel or the, the, the good angel and the, and the devil <laughs> is under each shoulder, right? And you got to find that balance. Um, and, but, but if you can, you open yourself up to so much more opportunity. Just a quick break, mid episode here. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. Don't forget to sign up to the book, thehighestandbestuse.com. You can find it on all the major platforms Amazon Chapters, Barnes and Noble. You can get the direct links at thehighestandbestuse.com. Now, back to the episode. Speaking of new opportunity, your private lending business. Tell us about that. What is highest and best use of private lending for you? Highest and best use of private lending there and private investing is bringing in people that understand it. And so, what, you know, I remember I got brought in. Lend lenders or borrowers? Um, we are doing um, borrowers. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, lending. Yeah. Sorry, lending. Yep. Yeah. So we're lending. So you're bringing in people that have the money who understand that side of the business. Correct. Got it. Yeah. Correct. Yep. All right. Um, and what I realized because I'm not a mortgage agent, mm -hmm. I'm a realtor. Mm -hmm. And but you're, uh, you're married to one. <laughs> yes, I am. Well, used to. She's no longer. She's no longer a mortgage agent. Oh no. No, no. She hung up her hat about maybe two, three years ago. I didn't know that. Yeah. No yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything now still comes into her, but it goes over to 
BM Select. Mm -hmm. He used to be previously Butler Mortgage. So Dave Butler is the owner yeah. uh, of that. And then we also brought in another mortgage agent, uh, Neil D'Souza, mm -hmm. who is really good and understands private lending and, and, and private investing. Mm -hmm. And so those two run that side of the business. Mm -hmm. Ryan, I know very little. I signed some stuff, <laughs> but I, I don't talk about it a lot because I, I'm not the expert when it comes to that, right. that they are. And so when you talk about highest and best use, it is surrounding yourself with people who are, are good at what they do and then also leveraging your, your skill sets and what you're good at and then building a business around it. Hmm. So what's your role? Are you the visionary? What's your, what's your role in Deep Pockets? My role in Deep Pockets is to sign whatever I need to sign, and that's it, yep. honestly. Yep. It's Darlene and Neil are the brains behind it. That's so cool. Yeah. I, so I, I, I would say I maybe send or spend maybe 5% of my time on that business. Wow. That yeah. low. I'm telling you, honestly. That's great. I took a picture today and deposited a check mm -hmm. into the bank account. That was it. That was it. That was it. Well, I don't even know. I don't even know what deal it was for. Yeah. What account it went into? <laughs> no. They run it. They run yeah. that business for me. Right. And, and so, you know, another Jim Rohn quote is, you know, when two or three people get together, anything is possible. Ooh. And so there are my two or three people that are mm. good at what they do. And we've come together um, and and uh, and built this business. Hmm. And so then now I'll use my platform. We will do webinars. I'll bring Neil out to, to do a talk at an upcoming master, a live mastermind event mm -hmm. to talk about that business that we do because really? he understands it i don't so is that your leverage piece and is that how the podcast ties into uh, private lending or being a brokerage owner or this kind of thing it's just a marketing tool for you it's not a money maker but it's a it's a way to get your word out yeah it's a way of getting my word out mm -hmm. we also do have sponsors so it does it, it so the podcast is actually self-sustaining that's great yeah so yeah. i don't lose money on the podcast we've got to make a bit of money on mm -hmm. it not a whole lot but but it's self-sustaining and that's mm -hmm. what i want and because it also brings in new investors, it brings in new partners, it brings in new ideas, mm -hmm. it brings in new perspective, yeah. it brings in, like just so many things this podcast brings in and, and everything else that I do, yeah. right? And, and it just, and, and so this is why it's important going back to the whiteboard, is if you don't have clear direction on what you want, you will get drawn into so many different business ideas. Yeah. And so I'll like, okay, this is cool, I'll mark it down, but not this year. Yeah. Now, sometimes I will, but that's more that six month course correction. Mm. Where now I'll take a look at what have we accomplished? Are we still going in the same direction? Do I need to take a few things on it off and add a few new things on? Live document. Right. Yeah. yeah in month one, sure. it looks different than month six. Sometimes. Exactly. Sometimes and, not. And again, the same analogy of sailing to England. You know, along the way, you're going to hit some waves. You're going to have some wind. <clears throat> your ship's going to get turned around a little bit. Yeah. And so this is your mid-course correction. And that's funny. This reminds me of a story. My parents are looking for a house, yeah. right? They sold their house a while back. They're renting in the meantime. And they're like, we're just going to see what happens with the market. I'm like, cool. So I tell them, I said, mom, you make a list. Dad, you make a list. And then mm -hmm. after, merge your list together. And I said, the reason you have to do that is because if you find the perfect house and it comes in, it gets dropped right on your lap. If you don't have a list of the things that you're after, yep. how do you know if you've found it? Exactly. Right? And that's the same thing as your whiteboard. If you don't know where you're going, how do you know if you found it? How do you know if you've hit your target? You have exactly. no idea. Yeah. You're just exactly. hoping life is good. Right. And that is how I used to live my life. Yeah. Just wandering around aimlessly, mm -hmm. just flowing down the river of life. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and I'll, uh, here's a great example of this is when I was at TD Bank, I started off in, in the tape library. Then I I'm sorry, went into what? tape library. The t what okay. the hell is so, a tape library? Yeah, interesting. So <laughs> tape library was this. Essentially, we had this big, massive room of all these tapes. And so anytime somebody would do a transaction or mortgage or whatever, everything either you had to run a job hmm. or it got copied. And so you'd run around, you'd have this monitor and had all these numbers. You'd have to go into this tape library and find the tape and mount it. Oh my okay. gosh. Year and a half, two years later, they actually then automated. So now they have these big machines with these big arms that go in and, and find actually it. find the tapes. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So they're, they're all cataloged. From there, moving into operations. So I used to do IT. So yep. I was in the IT field. Um, from there, I moved up to team lead. Then from there, I got promoted to manager. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I got promoted to shift manager 
And all this time, I thought that I'm moving in, 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 in this direction of, of scaling and moving up in TD Bank. But I remember I sat down with a friend. He's like, listen, um, you're just flowing down the river of life. You, have you, did you ask for any of these positions or did you want them? I'm like, no. The opportunity presented itself and I said, hey, would you like to do this? Hey, would you like to do that? Hey, you'd probably be really good in this role. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was that they were putting me in these roles. And look, I'm not knocking anybody. I was at TD at the time. But they were putting me in these roles because I was good at what I was doing doing mm -hmm. so they didn't have to worry about this position below them right and and so then really what i'm saying is that if you don't design your own life you'll fall into somebody else's plan and guess what they have planned for you not much hmm. so then now you so that was when i realized and there's another jim Rohn quote <laughs> and so once i so you start hearing all these things and you're like man i do need to design a life i do need to map this out yeah and once you start doing that, I'm telling you, things will change so quickly. Isn't it wild? You look back after 12 months of a vision board on your wall and you're like, wow, one, two, and three did it. Four, kind of forgot about that one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine did those. Yeah. You know, like you just, it just happens. Yeah. And it's and, you, and, magic. You, and, then, and then you wonder how it happens because yeah. then all of a sudden these certain things just start to come into your life. And you're like, I, I asked for this, hmm. this whether it's this, this person or this opportunity or whatever it may be. But you're like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, how does this work? Did you put your brokerage? Let's talk about the brokerage. Did you put your brokerage on a, on a vision board or did that just kind of come organically by being in the industry? You know what? Yeah, it's an interesting question. What I put on my whiteboard, I guess maybe I kind of tie it to it. Well, I didn't say about, about a brokerage, but I did say that I wanted a podcast studio. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I, but I didn't want to do it in, in my house. Yeah. And so this opportunity presented itself... And I was like, okay, this is interesting. I don't really want to be a part of a brokerage at the time. Yeah. Because I was happy with w the way things were going. And then I was like, but if I become a part of this brokerage. I can have a I, podcast studio. <laughs> it, it, that didn't really kind of come until a little bit later on. But, okay. it, but, it, but what it was was, if I do this, am I going to compromise my mini retirements? Because oh. I don't want to compromise that. And so we thought about it and we negotiated and then I was like, okay, this might be an, a, an interesting opportunity because we'll be a brokerage in the Durham region. We've now moved into Toronto where it's not only just real estate agents and teaching them how to be good real estate agents, mm -hmm. but also bringing in smart home choice and also bringing in the element of real estate investing as well too. And I said, oh, this is actually kind of a unique opportunity here. And then we went to the office and we saw the one office that was vacant. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> podcast studio. <laughs> <laughs> and so check. Yeah, done. You know? Yeah. And so it, it's, you know, sometimes there's little small things that may show up on your whiteboard that you have to maybe sometimes even just fit into the puzzle. Right. Right. They're saying, yeah. oh, okay. This is maybe what it was. Yeah. Interesting. So the brokerage you were with before was? Right at home. Right at home realty. Right. And then you migrated. You're like, you know what? I think my return on time would be better over here or return on capital or more income. Like what was the, what was like from the financial and time perspective, how did you make that decision? Um, I made that decision based on, I think the leadership uh, over at our neighborhood realty. Really? They had certain qualities um, and certain things that I didn't have. <clears throat> and I was like, this could be a very interesting um, relationship mm -hmm. and business that we could build together. Um, because I was a little bit more out in the social side. I was more outgoing. And then the leader, Rhonda, Rhonda Bess and Bob, they, they were just so driven on growing this brokerage. And I was like, you know, what I'm doing, I think, can help them. And what they're doing can help me. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of move together in, in, in the direction that would benefit both of us. How many owners? creating in, that win-win. How many owners in total? Uh, there's three officially. Three? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's three officially. Um, but all all like partners and couples mm -hmm. we all get together so i mean we had a meeting this morning and yeah we, you know we, we share ideas after and, you sign the check then you went to your meeting and yeah, now you're here yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly. what a day yeah, man yeah. but um uh yeah and so so it's been going well you know we we everybody in that leadership team have unique qualities mm -hmm. that there's no way 
that brokerage would be successful, I think, at this point in time with, without each of us there. What's the most important quality it takes to run a, to run a brokerage like this? Um, I would say leadership. Uh, leadership is huge. And, and, and having a vision that people that are following you may not see, but they believe in you. Mm. They believe that you believe it, even though it hasn't happened yet. You know, so I mean, like open up the brokerage in Toronto. You know, that's a huge thing. It's a big step for us to do that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and sometimes you just need that one leader in that group to say, yes, this will work. Even though the leaders say, ah, is it, is this the right time? Mm -hmm. We're just getting out of COVID. What if they lock us down again? It's a lot of money. It's this. Mm -hmm. And then one person says, we can do this. Yeah. I'm like, all right, we can do we this. Can do it. And then you relay that message to everybody else that are listening to you and following you, saying, "We can do this. Hmm. Let's go." Yeah. Because then after that, it, it there's only really two things that happen: you either succeed or you learn. <laughs> That's it. There is no failure. Yep. It's succeed or learn. And once you once you're comfortable in those two things, then you're you you get more comfortable in in making larger leaps and bounds. Right. Knowing that the infrastructure is there behind you to say, hey, if I go and put together this idea, mm -hmm. there's a team of people back there that, that have my back, mm -hmm. right? We can do it. We can do it because mm -hmm. if things don't go how we want it to go, we get together and we can discuss it and we can talk it. Okay, where are we lacking? What's failing? What's not going the way that we want it to go? Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay, now we can correct it. Financially, what does it cost to invest in a brokerage like this? Uh, a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. And, and, and I think also, too, more, more sweat equity mm -hmm. um, is involved in it. And you don't, you, don't, you don't get paid right up front. I think that's the hardest part, I think, for a lot of beginning entrepreneurs, thinking that um, the money comes right away, and it doesn't. Sure. It takes time. It sure. takes time. How do you get paid owning a brokerage? Like, are you building equity or is it a cash flow thing from, like, how does that yeah, work? Yeah, it, it, it can be a combination of both. There, okay. there, there can be some equity if you're buying the buildings. Can you break it down a little bit? Like, can we go into that? We can go a little bit Ish. into it. Yeah, right? okay, service yeah, level, yeah. sure. Yeah, so if you're buying the buildings, then obviously we know that real estate is a powerful tool. Right. So you're going to get some equity play there. Um, if you're renting the buildings, which we do for, mm -hmm. for some of them, mm -hmm. um, then it's about, bringing in enough realtors to then be able to carry the cost of those offices. Yep. And then if you have enough realtors in each of those buildings, then you create cash flow. Gotcha. And you create the cash flow based on the deals that they're doing and the splits that you have. Mm -hmm. And the way that we do our splits is very unique. Um, I don't say unique. I guess a little bit more unique in today's market than in previous. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the older brokerages like Century 21 and Remax, they would do like a, you know, like a 90-10 or 80-20 or a 70-30 split. The way that we do ours is just, it's like a $500 flat fee. Just a desk fee. Kind uh, of it's a $500 flat fee for every transaction. Yep. And then a desk fee every month. Okay. So a desk fee is like 150 sure. bucks a month. Um, and so because what we're doing is we're creating a brokerage that is big on education mm -hmm. and also two allowing the realtors to have more money in their pocket. Sure. So it's just, it doesn't matter if you're doing a $10 million deal <laughs> or if you're doing, uh, you know, a $500,000 residential home is $500. Right. So that makes it attractive for realtors then to come over mm. um, to, because, because <clears throat> the desk fees aren't that, the desk fees and the, and the transaction fees aren't high. Gotcha. So you're a volume model. Correct. You got to have volume. So how many, how many agents would you have working under your wing? So right now we got about 153. Wow. Yeah. So that's yeah, a lot of agents. Yeah. Yeah. So we're Man. growing. Yeah. Good and so you. that's a good leverage of, of, of your time. Mm -hmm. And, and, and what, you, what we're doing in return is educating them, mm -hmm. whether it be through the webinars, whether it be through the podcast, um, whether it be through the, the in-class uh, events that we're doing and the mastermind events. There's just, just like, I would say on a weekly basis, we probably have anywhere from four to five events. No way. Yeah, yeah, wow. like every week. And, you know, you, you got to be able to leverage 
your your designer's time to to put the the, the pictures together. Then we have an office manager. Then we have the admins each of the locations. You have a deal secretary. You've got like there's a lot of moving pieces yeah. in, in 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 doing a brokerage. There really is, and so you have to be able to to count on the people and put the right people in the right places. For the agents that maybe haven't bought into the culture mm -hmm. that you're trying to create, how do you help them? The way that we help them is education. Mm -hmm. I think education is always key, right? The return on investment with education is insane. Yeah. It's insane. It is. Like you spend a dollar on education and the multiple on that is typically, if you put in the work and put in the time, like the stock market will not touch it. Not even close. No, not even close. I remember the first time I decided to spend money on a mentor. Mm -hmm. And what'd you spend? Uh, How much? A uh, thousand bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, it was a lot. That was, it, was, it was painful to pay that in the beginning. <laughs> and I remember talking to my neighbor and he's like, don't do it. That's a waste of money. And then he went on and on. What'd your neighbor do for a living? He was also an entrepreneur as well, too. Yeah, really? he did, yeah, yeah, audio, video, hmm. you know. Um, and Because um, usually the people who say don't do it are not entrepreneurs. Yeah, I know. They don't understand the education space. But the people who have been through that go, oh, hey, if you do this right, right. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, set. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I was a little shocked with that. But I was like, I got to try it. Because everybody that I was listening to yeah. um, um, in the real estate investing world, had mentors, at least the ones that were growing and scaling very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so I, I said, I'm going to do it. And I did it. And I said, oh, let me just do it for like two months. I'll get the information <laughs> and I'll get the hell out. Right? Because I'm going to get the form. I'm going to get the information. Yeah, get yeah, a, yeah. You know what I mean? Two years later, two years later, um, paid $1,000 a month because I realized that there wasn't, there wasn't a, 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 a magic bullet there wasn't one thing. There was a multiple of things uh, and small things to change the direction of where I was going. Mm. I think everybody wants. I think people forget that. You know, look at your yourself as a, a, a as a big, huge Titanic ship. Okay, <laughs> you cannot change the direction of your life in a day. True. It takes time. And so your mentor is helping you and teaching you how to slowly change your the direction, but it takes time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I realized with mentorship. Because I remember when I was, uh, before I got into it too, I'm like, I can't believe these guys, people are charging $10,000, $15,000, $20,000. Like, I think it, it's, it's, it's not fair. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Now that I've actually seen it and I've done it, I'm like, no, it is fair mm -hmm. because what they're teaching you now, you obviously have to find the rent mentors as well too because there are one. Yeah. yeah, you got to do your own due diligence and how long have they been doing it and are they where you want to be? Um, so you, you obviously got to do your homework on that. But it is yeah. because they're they're showing you. It's like snakes and ladders. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're, they're the ladder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if you keep doing it yourself, you're going to be on that snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Agree or disagree. Real estate works if you do. Yeah. Real estate works if you do. That's an interesting question. Yes. But, it, I mean, it can go both ways, right? But, yes, it does if you're willing to work on educating yourself, on learning how to raise capital, on, you know, um, doing things to educate yourself. But once you acquire it, then you don't have to work or you very little because now it can become... Um, to a form of being passive, but not truly passive. Sure. What, right. You know what? That's interesting. What does passive actually mean to you? Passive means nothing. I'm not doing anything at all. <laughs> that's real passive. Even like I told you earlier, when I took a picture of the check, then that's not passive. Sure. There's still a very small piece that I have to do. Mm -hmm. True passiveness is doing nothing. Laying on the couch, watching TV. And getting paid. And getting paid. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there are forms, you know, you can get to a very higher form of being passive, but it isn't like 100%. Mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult. It's possible, but it's difficult. Yeah. Does that excite you? The passive, the passive side of the business? Or do you always want to have, excluding the mini retirements, do you always want to have that, you know, we keep a finger in the pot every now and again. You know, I enjoy, we'll dip in, dip out. I enjoy, I enjoy working. I enjoy creating things. I enjoy thinking outside the box so i like it like for me it's not like 
um, it's not like, oh my God, I've only, you know, I've got, it's, it's more of like a race against time. It, it, here's, here's the thing is that like at nine o'clock at night, I'm like, okay, here's all this other things I've got to get done, but I got to stop. So I'm stopping at nine 30. Cause if I don't, I'll go till two in the morning easily. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, um, it, it always feels sometimes that there isn't enough time <laughs> in a day to get everything that I want to get done. And, and when you get to that point, it is you, you're excited to wake up and you hate going to bed. That is where you want to be in life. If you can get to that, um, then you know you're living your passion. Then you know you're enjoying life. I want to end on that. That was a really good quote. Um, I, of this entire show, I think I'm going to take that with me. You know, yeah. you want to be excited to wake up and just really love your day. And I can tell, like from this side of the mic, I can tell how passionate you are about your craft, whether it's lending or brokerages or what have you, but more so creating a life that you want to live. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think of, of all of these things that you could be doing, you've really, really honed in on like, hey, I've only got one shot at this. So how do I want to spend my days? So, uh, you know, for me to you, thank you for being here. That was that was super cool. And I, I, I'm going to latch on to that. That was great. You know, that was really, really great. So, um, again, thank you for being here. And uh, uh, this was a great episode. Thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate yeah. it. Uh, I enjoyed this conversation with you. Um, and uh, And I enjoy seeing what you're building as well, too. You know, and uh, and I think that, uh, you know, your audience uh, know who you are and what you're trying to do. And they're going to continue to watch your journey as you continue to grow. So thanks for having me here and thanks for doing this and, and, and having some great guests on your show. Where can people find out more about you? They can find me on Instagram. They can find me on Facebook. They can find just do Gary Herbert on Google. <laughs> <laughs> you will find me. H I B B E R T. There's yeah, only one. <laughs> yeah, H I B B E R T. Yeah, exactly. Actually, you know what? There isn't. There's one other one. Is it really? Yeah. Come on. I'm telling you. You know what wow. the crazy part is? When I was trying to start the business and yeah. finish on this, there was a pastor that caught up, got caught up in a real estate investing scam. No way. So every time I had to sign, um, if I was purchasing an investment property, yeah. I'd have to sign off saying, I am not, I'm this, not guy. this guy. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen anymore now. I think he got he got uh, let off or whatever. They found some evidence, but uh, yeah. yeah. So that's, there isn't just one. That's too funny. Yeah, just look at this face. Find the right one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning into the highest and best use real estate podcast. Don't forget to sign up to the book at thehighestandbestuse.com. I'm your host Ryan Carr, reminding you that good deals are found, great deals are created. Like, share, follow, and subscribe, and we will see you on the next episode.